Okay, I need you guys to stick with me in this video until the end because there's a lot of misconceptions and there's a lot to explain with a double barrel pellet rifle that shoots two pellets at the same time. The first thing is uh, we expect from the factory that tolerances would be very tight because of the fact that if one barrel is canted a certain way, it could uh, mean accuracy problems and throw your shots off. But anyway, after inspecting this and taking this piece of plastic off, I found out that there was a lot of play in there inside the barrel. So right from the get-go, the factory uh, didn't make sure that these were perfectly in line. And I mean, I'm talking within the thousandths of an inch. You have to have it perfect, absolutely perfect. Now, in the real world, if you have two barrels that are perfect from the factory with the best tolerances possible, there's another thing you guys have to consider is the fact that each barrel has its own rifling. It's not going to be the same. So the characteristics of the pellet in this one are not going to be the characteristics of the pellet in this one. When they both come out of the barrel, even the crown, where the lands and the grooves are in the front here, the crown part, um, each pellet is going to come out differently with its own unique twist and markings on the pellet which is going to send it on two different trajectories and what I got for you here is uh, showing you uh, this was done at three yards right here and you can see it's almost lined up right here these two barrels um, there might be a little bit of tolerance issue in there at close range you're always going to have great tolerances but at further range you're going to start noticing stuff so if you notice this group right here notice that the pellets change a little bit this one comes over here this one's over here that's because of the rifling the rifling has got its own unique characteristics so it's going to drive the pellet in a different direction now these two pellets coming close together this is an issue and what that's called is inward canting so what inward canting is is let's imagine that this is the barrel right here or no let's see Here's the barrel right here, okay, and then here's the barrel right here. If it's if if these barrels are canted towards each other, even a thousandths of an inch, it doesn't matter. The trajectory path, sometimes, not all the time, the pellets will hit each other, and I've had that problem happen even here in the basement at 15 yards. I shot a couple pellets at 15 yards, a different type of pellet, and I got one hole but not only did I get one hole but I found a chunk went off and hit the wall so what so what that does is that causes uh, some hazard issues because of the fact that if these two pellets hit each other in mid trajectory what they could do is they could bounce off each other and go flying a different direction so it's kind of a hazard and then you got outward cant outward cant is when you have these two barrels here and one pellet goes up this way okay and then one goes down this way and that would make it open up a little bit like that so here it is and once again I'm talking even a thousandths of an inch it really doesn't matter so if they did the best they could let's say they did the best they could and they didn't have this plastic thing in here and, and let's say that if you took this off and the barrels were perfectly matched together you're still going to have issues because of the simple fact that two barrels are not going to be the same. And the other thing you have to consider is turbulence. Uh, when the two pellets come out of the barrel, there might be turbulence there because they're both spinning, but they're close to each other. And that could cause some turbulence among each other. So you have to consider that. So uh, the canting that can happen here, it can happen any direction. Let me show you. The canting could happen inwardly like this where you fire the two shots and the two shots go like in a V-shape like I'm showing here. An inward canting. So you fire from here and they both come together and they smack each other. Now this could be in windage or in elevation. So windage or elevation. So you can have canting any direction. For instance these two pellets lined up right here you could have a cant that goes this like this like in a v-shape hitting each other or you can have it going like that and it could be this way 
It could be this way, it could be this way, any way you think you can think of. So that uh, in some of the confusion uh, with the double barrel rifle, you have to consider all the physics involved here because there is a lot of physics involved. Um, I always thought that it would be better to have a double barrel rifle where you fire one shot singly and then have another shot ready to go, like a quick follow-up shot, so like a two-shot thing where you can follow up. But this one fires two pellets at the same time. Now what I want to explain to you guys is some guys were saying, you know, why not just fix the trajectory with loading a different weight pellet in each of the barrel, like maybe a light one here and a heavy one here so they don't smack each other. Well, I found out that no matter if you put a light one here, heavy one here, or vice versa, you're still going to have issues where the pellets either smack each other in mid-flight or you have really, really, really wide groups. Now, these are groups at 15 yards. Now, this rifle is not really meant for, for long range to begin with. This is just something for maximum probably 15, 25 yards, uh, maybe for like hunting or something like that. So when you're doing your groups, you want to aim for a, the center of your target or whatever, and you want to fire quite a few shots and see where that group's going. But uh, I wanted to tell you guys that because of the simple fact that, once again, in a perfect world, you know, when I worked in a machine shop, so I know from experience that if you even have a thousandth of an inch between these barrels difference, you know, it's going to throw off the pellet a little differently. But then also I was telling you that in a perfect world, if these two barrels are absolutely perfect among each other, you know, as far as uh, the up and down, you know, the windage and the elevation, perfect alignment, the rifling takes on its own characteristic as it leaves the barrel. And the velocities are going to be different too. One of the one of the velocities, let's say that these, these were both 750, one of the velocities might be 725 instead of 750. So you got that to consider too. And what does that mean? That means the one that's 750 like up here, let's say this one's 750 and this one's like 700 or 725, the one that's up here is going to just off the velocity difference, you're going to have a different trajectory. So what you guys have to do is end the headache of expecting this to be perfect at different ranges. It's You're not going to have that. Now you might get lucky and add certain pellets that might do that, but I would challenge you to try this at 3 yards, 10 yards, 15 yards, and 25 yards. You'll see what I'm saying. Sometimes you don't even know which one's the top or the bottom. Usually what you could do to find out which one's the top or the bottom is if you fire a wad cutter, excuse me, and uh, a round point because they'll leave different marks. These are wad cutters from Beeman, by the way. These are the cheap ones, the 7.7 .7 grain. And uh, I found out that uh, through some exper uh, experiments and stuff, I found out that these two pellets, at least they don't totally collide into each other. This is 15 yards, but they haven't collided with each other yet inside the house here, but out in the yard, no, now that could be a different story. So, so I would be careful with this one. It's, it does have a hazard issue with intersecting pellets. Once again, the inward cant, which is right here. You got two pellets that are flying and one barrel decides that it's going to cant that pellet downward. They could intersect right about here and then smack each other and then go flying in pieces. And that's what I have that's what I had happen to be inside here. I had one hole that was like this and then one hole that was keyholed and then a little piece here and then a little piece over hitting the wall. So the two pellets hit each other and they exploded and flew all over the place. So so anyway, uh, that'll end the confusion with this. So what you guys have to know right from the get-go is even if you have these barrels lined up, you, you still can expect it not to be not to be a rifle for any kind of accuracy at all, but just for like close range hunting or something like that because you got two pellets. So let me show you the rifle really quick here. And I did put a scope on it, but it's really not worth having a scope to tell you the truth. 
the front sights, if, you, if you've only got 25 yards, the front sights are going to be just as good as a scope. Because if you don't have accuracy, you know, it doesn't make sense to put on a scope. It ain't going to help a whole lot. So I can probably shoot this one better, you know, with regular sights on it than I can putting a scope on it. So here we go. Here it is. All right, so I had some guys uh, from MIT following uh, one of my YouTube channels, and uh, once in a while I talk to them about some issues with trajectory and turbulence and stuff like that. That's why I was gonna tell one of the guy, talk to one of the guys about this one here. But even even we can figure this out. We don't have to go to college to know this stuff. We just have to use our head and think a little bit. But uh, anyway, some of them guys, you know, they tell me what they feel about it and stuff. And and one of the guys was confirming what I said. If everything's perfect, you know, the barrels and everything are perfectly lined up where they need to be. That the rifling marks in these two barrels are going to send the pellet different directions. And the turbulence, the turbulence from each pellet spinning is going to cause one to get knocked off course a little bit too. So, but anyway, yep, so a 15 yard, 25 yard maximum range probably. So, hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.